hey you guys i'm back with another youtube video and today i have a extra 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 long kawaii set to show you guys So right now I'm using my NSI dehydrator and I like to prep one of my client's hands at a time. So after I prep and lay my acrylic, I'll then move on to the next hand and do the same thing. So now I'm applying my Young Nails Protein Bond and afterwards I'll be using my No Lift, No Lift Primer. These are actually C-curve tips that are doubled. She really likes how, you know, sculpted nails look and she really liked the C-curve nail. So when she wanted to go extra, extra long and I had switched over to using C-curve tips, she convinced me to just double them. And I got better over time at shaping them because they were thick, but these are actually the softer C-curve tips. I believe they're the newer ones, the newer square ones that aren't as hard, but I do prefer the other ones for when I'm shaping like regular extra long nails i do not offer this length to anybody else but her so for kawaii sets they're really cute really random really girly so i had laid out a bunch of different colors as i was doing this that pretty much matched the kawaii charms and i did get these charms from totally nail supply So first, I'm going to apply a very thin layer of clear acrylic to the natural nail to prevent lifting, prevent any staining. And if she were to get a soak off, you'll clearly be able to tell when you're actually getting down to the natural nail. When I'm doing nails this long and I'm applying my colored acrylic or my design, I really do try my best to make sure I apply it very thin because you would hate to just be trying to cap nails that are all types of bumpy like i just think it would lay smoother of course if the base was as flat as possible so i'll be using a purple color pink orange white i also have some circular glitter i forgot where it's from but i'll make sure that i leave it down below when i go and check and i'm also using the glitter that i had made myself Right now, I am using some very wet acrylic beads to create my designs, and I'm also going to throw in some random glitter here and there onto the nail to give it a unicorn kind of look because I did want these to be really girly, but she ended up wanting to paint them with matte polish at the end, but it still made a nice look because I just feel like glitter and matte polish is just amazing. So yeah, since her nails were so long and I wanted to cap these nails very quickly, I did pull out my size 16 brush today. I actually got these from my local nail supply store and it's a nice brush. I actually really do like the brush and of course they worked amazing for this set because her nails were so long. For my first bead, I did pick up a large bead and I made sure that the acrylic stayed on top of the nail as I started to slowly bring the acrylic down. Also, you guys see that I'm angling her nail downwards just to help the acrylic kind of flow and let gravity do its work as well as I'm working. So when applying your acrylic to prevent a lumpy application, you want to make sure that the top of the bead you applied is flat before dragging it down. And you're going to see me make sure that I use the tip of my brush to flatten the top of the bead before I start to bring the rest of my acrylic down. 
This way, when I apply my next bead, it will smoothly go over the previous one and you won't see any harsh lines. Now for my cuticle application, and remember that you wanna hold your client's finger downwards as you're applying the acrylic. I applied my bead a little bit away from the cuticle area before pushing it into that area to prevent any flooding. And if you do experience some flooding, you can always use the very tip of your brush to go around the cuticle area to clean it up and prevent lifting. So you guys are going to see me constantly turning her finger to the side just to check the thickness of the nail as well as the apex because her nails are really long and I don't want to make these too thin to where they break easily and she'll have to come back. Because these nails are too long for you to be walking around one missing so I always make sure that her nails are properly structured. So for my next nail, I'll be creating an ombre nail from white to my pink and white circular glitter. And I don't think it's a good idea to use this Mia Secret white to fade into another color. Now, if you was putting nude on top of this white, that's perfectly fine because you are gonna end up covering it with another color. But I really just think the 3D powder, of course, is too thick to ombre. It's just, it wasn't meant for that. It's for 3D art. And I honestly forgot that I would normally mix it with clear, prior to using it because I was just so excited about her set. So you guys are gonna see what happens when I do blend the colors. The blend didn't come out too bad. The blend really wasn't the problem. I just didn't like how fast it dried. See, now the ombre, the ombre really isn't that bad. I really wish it wasn't thick, but I don't think that the ombre looks bad at all. It's, it's the next couple parts that was really messing me up. As I said, this powder did dry a little fast, so right here when I was trying to blend it, you can clearly see that extremely harsh line, but of course I did later go ahead and cover it.
So for this next nail, I am doing another tie-dye glitter nail. And I actually liked how this nail came out way better than the pinky nail. So I know I have a lot, a lot of beginners on my channel. And I just wanted to remind all of my beginners to work at a slow pace. Please work out a slow place when it comes to your pricing, when it comes to how many clients you want to take a day, when it comes to your craft, your work, your profession. You really do want to make sure that you're taking your time and you're not too much in a rush to see that profit. And I wanted to remind you guys this because of course over quarantine, nails has become something that is very popular. A lot of people have taken classes and want to learn this new skill. A lot of people are tuning into YouTube videos just like you are. So you really do want to make sure that you stand out from the rest. And of course, that takes time. It's going to take time to build that page, to build that clientele, to build the style that you want to put out to the public. It's going to take time, but it's all about your patience and how willing you are to put in that work to get those results. So as I'm finishing up this nail, let me tell y'all. So the first time I've ever done someone's nails, I actually wanted to do a rainbow ombre set. I wanted my first set of nails on human hands to literally be the best set ever performed by a beginner for the first time. That was my mindset. That was the mindset that I was going into. I was practicing it on the practice hand for, you know, a few, for a little while, for I'm going to say a couple months. But the thing about transferring from the practice hand to a human hand it's a lot different simply because there's no cuticles and sidewalls on your practice hand. So when I got to my friend and I started doing her nails and I started to realize how runny the acrylic was, it's going on to the sides, the Mia Secret cover pink is everywhere, her nails were so thin and I was so upset. I'm pretty sure I've told this story before, but everybody had to start somewhere and I was literally DMing nail text left and right like, what do you guys what do y'all do like what's best where should i go and people were pointing me to different youtube videos and i was just studying and studying because after that one time i messed up my friends nails i was just embarrassed and i wanted to just like redeem myself i'm like okay i'm gonna let those nails come off and whenever she's ready we're just gonna do a regular set with some clear acrylic and some polish and that's how i started just using polish before going on into colored acrylic because colored acrylic kind of scared me after that, but it was simply just like my acrylic ratio. That's what the problem was. That's simply what the problem was. And her, her second set was nice. I actually liked it. I will never forget that nail set. It was light blue and she had one encapsulated nail and a glittery pinky. And I really hope that one day I can find that video if it's not on like my really old Instagram page because I will never forget how hard I was sweating when I was doing her nails. Like there was literal sweat coming down my face because I'm looking at her cuticles like that. That's not supposed to look like that. So for this nail, I'm just using a plain glitter and I did make this glitter myself. This is honestly my favorite glitter and I wish that you guys could see it up close because it is so pretty and I think it looks even better matte.
so next I'll be doing a try ombre nail and I do have a separate video on try ombre nails if you guys are interested in watching that because these weren't really the best colors to try ombre but I still think they came out really cute and I had threw some glitter in there too So now I'm applying my first bead and all of these colors are from Nail by John. I have recently got all of these colors and I really do like them a lot. I'm always talking about his acrylic but anyway remember guys when you are applying your acrylic you do want to make sure that the top of your bead is flat so that if you are doing any ombre it seamlessly flows over the previous bead. So right here I do kind of see that harsh line so I did get a very small bead, dried it out and after placing the bead I blended the bead upwards and downwards so that I can create a seamless ombre and cover that very harsh pink line that you've seen under the purple acrylic. I want to know how much do you guys think these were. I really want you guys to comment down below. Throw me a price. How much do you guys think these nails were? And I'm going to pin the comment that's correct. So now I'll be following my client's nails and this is actually her opposite hand and you guys can see that she did want to do a different design on her other hand. This is also a safety bit so it will allow me to seal my client's cuticle and get extremely close to the area without cutting her or even being worried about nipping my client. So when you are using your e-file near the cuticle area, you do want to make sure that you are using it at a low speed regardless of the bit you're using, safety bit or not. There's no reason for you to be using this at a high speed near the cuticle area. And you don't want to remove too much acrylic by mistake. I used to have a horrible habit of filing the cuticle area too much and I'd end up removing some of the acrylic and then I'd have to cover it with stones or something. That's ghetto.
Also, when I'm debulking the nail, I prefer to file down the nail in even motions across the nail so that when I go in with my hand file to smoothen the nail, it'll be way easier than trying to remove large bumps or dented areas using my hand file. So now using my 8080 grit files, I'm filing the side walls of her nail as well as underneath her nail to remove any unwanted nail tip that is visible. These are doubled C-curve tips so I really wanted to make sure that you couldn't tell that these tips were doubled. Also, I'll now be filing the top of the nail to get it smooth and after I finish filing all of my nails, I'll later use my buffer to finish getting all of the scratches out of the acrylic nails. So these are 100 100 grit buffers that I got from my local nail supply store but of course I will link some similar ones down below in the description box. I will be applying my kawaii charms using a diamond gel that I got off of Amazon and I will be linking these down below. 
I was drawing it between charms and that's why you guys aren't going to see the full process of me applying the charms because literally after I would apply the charms, I would hurry up and get my UV lamp and dry the gel because you guys know the charms are heavy and the gel is going to, it doesn't run but if you allow it to, the stones will move. Even if I was applying really small stones onto the nail, if she was to bump it before it went into the lamp, they would have been completely out of place. So I made sure that my lamp was near me so that I can quickly dry the gel before it moves out of place. Now I'm applying my Swarovski stones using my Zule Nail Bling Glue and y'all my client do not play about them fake stones. She do not like them fake stones. She's actually the only person that I have been offering the stones to simply because I just wasn't sure if people would want them. I know they're a little more expensive but now that I have such a collection of the other crystals I will be you know offering them soon because I got a little collection now and I can't only offer them to her. So this is all that I have for you guys today. Please let me know down below if y'all want to see some press on nails. I have seen a couple people comment in my last video that they want to see me freestyle on some press on nails. So let me know down below what you guys would like to see. And I did also change my intro as well as my YouTube name and my LLC. But I just kind of grew out of the top by everything. I kind of wanted something that I could do a little more with. I just feel like I could do a little more with the name Top Beauty and I really appreciate everyone's support. I was really nervous about changing it, but y'all got me, y'all got me. So if you did enjoy this nail video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I'm gonna see you guys in the next video.